You've heard the news, Donald Trump is on fire. Donald Trump, fresh off a landslide victory in New Hampshire. His success has baffled the mainstream media, but it turns out the secret to Trump has been right under their noses the whole time. This is a circus unlike to anything that we have seen in modern American politics. This is the greatest show on earth. He's the greatest show on earth. Now, if you want to understand the circus that is Donald Trump, don't ask these idiots. Ask the guy with a sword down his throat. Circus performer Adam Realman. People like the danger element of a circus and a sideshow. You know, when the lion tamer sticks his head in the lion's mouth, tell me, you want to see the lion just chomp his head off. Yeah. The audience, I think, always wants to know that this stuff is real, and it is real. We're watching a loaded gun on stage, and it could go off at any moment and say, Mexicans are rapists. Boom. It could say anything. So there's a dangerous... Mexicans element. are rapists. <laughs> Okay, so maybe he hasn't been to many Trump events, but Real Man taught me that the greatest show must have a ringleader who can work a crowd. You gotta give them, give them the pitch. You have to impress them. You gotta impress your crowd, exactly. exactly. Your poll numbers, it, super high. Correct. I'm leading every poll nationwide. You're the best. That's it. You best know? businessman you've ever seen. Yes. I make great deals. Look at this show. This is the greatest show on earth, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to... Hey, let's bring out the snake charmer. We bring out the snake charmer. You bring Palin out. Uh, okay. You betcha. It has to be something that an audience will want to see. Everybody had a good old time. You bought a hat. Hell, I want to see this freak again. Exactly. This guy got it. Trump really is the greatest show on earth. Right, Adam? Well, you know, by calling him the greatest show on earth, you're kind of insulting a lot of the circus world. Okay. Regardless, I had to see Trump up close. So I headed to one of his rallies and got to hear from some die-hard Trumpeters. I think he's the only candidate on the Republican side who's actually going to build a wall. And who's going to make him pay for it? He's going to make China. And you know what? People say, oh, you can't make China pay for it. You know what? That's a bunch of horse crap. It's pretty easy to make China pay for it. China will be paying for the wall. Shouldn't Mexico pay for the wall? Oh, my Mexico, sorry. Either way. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. One of those one countries of, is paying for that wall. One of those countries is paying for that wall. Donald Trump is inaugurated. He becomes president of the United States. What's behind that curtain? Take one of my cards. Defeation of ISIS. Defeation of ISIS? Yes. What should we do to ISIS? Bomb the out of them. Where officially should we bomb ISIS? Probably like Israel area, but not like, not necessarily there, but around the area. I think he's going to help with the ISIS. What's he going to do with the ISIS? He, he can't tell us right now. All if right. he tells everybody, then the next thing you know, somebody else is going to copy what he says. They knew their Trump. Once I was under the big top, we were all grooving to Trump's power playlist, which included Tiny Dancer like eight times. Finally, there he was, and he wasted no time shining the spotlight on the main event himself. It takes guts to run for president, believe me. You've been number one in the polls every single week. I've been on the cover of Time Magazine so much lately. When I was on last week, I didn't even know they were putting him in the cover. Can you imagine? That's when you're really hitting it big. He made the audience recoil at the freak show. Look at back there. Look at the press. Turn around and look at these people. Look at them. Six. <laughs> they start booing. He whipped the crowd into a frenzy with a high wire act of political incorrectness. She said he's a pussy. That's not. <laughs> And then something strange happened. We're going to do something that's going to be whether you like Dwight Eisenhower, no matter what you do, Dwight Eisenhower, I like Ike. Everybody said He started to meander. I just asked for tickets. I wanted tickets for the debate. The post office in Washington, D.C., right? People got bored. It's an incredible building. But then, like any great showman, he pulled them back in with his greatest routine, a feat of xenophobic strength. Who the hell is going to pay for the wall? Mexico! What? Ha <laughs> ha, classic bit. Trump had delivered. I laughed, I cried, I reinvigorated my irrational fear of foreigners. Mexico. I even jockeyed for selfies with a couple of reality TV stars. Donald, great joke! Great joke! Got it. A memory that will last for possibly four years. God help us all. When was America last great? For me, I would say the turning point for our country was 1913, when we passed the 17th Amendment. And what's so like back when like women couldn't vote? 
Yeah, 19, well, back up, but again, let's like go that back. Like that's kind of your sweet spot sure. right there? Absolutely, but 1913. What year was America great? When it was founded. Except for the slavery stuff. Except for the slavery stuff, you know? I think we were probably our strongest immediately post-World War II. So around the 1950s? Yeah, mid-40s, 50s. I mean, I think the 50s was great other than, uh, you know, segregation and women's look, rights. Look, look we, could, we could sit here and paint negative uh, faces of, of all times in America. Correct. It's make America great again. So when, when was the last great? It's always been great. So we're, so I'm, if it's always been great, what are we trying to go back to? We're not going back. We're going forward. Well, I guess uh, the 80s were pretty good. Right, the yeah, 80s. The 80s, great music, great Crack video cocaine. Games. Crack cocaine. Yeah. Well, we're always great. The people are great. But, so, but, so, yeah, yeah, economic, so America is great right now. So we did it. No, we didn't do it. America became, became great when the founding fathers put pen on paper in 1776 and decided to build a country based on laws. Right. That was greatness. That was awesome, yeah. other than the slavery, obviously. That was terrible. And the well, we did have that. Yeah, we did have that. Sla and the Indian thing, right? Th that was terrible. And the women's voting thing. But other than that, that was awesome. A few hiccups along the way, you know. Right. Like, like they say, uh, you, 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 nobody uh, made it to the top without breaking a few pieces of China. That wasn't an insult, by the way. Donald Trump's new ideological screening test will weed out extremists with extreme views about religion, such as its oppression of women, gays, and non-believers. That's right, Trump wants prospective Americans to embrace religious freedom, gender equality, and gay rights. At a recent rally in Wisconsin, his fans were on board. I am for extreme vetting. I am. I think it is a good idea. Extreme vetting. Think that's a good idea? Of course. He forgot one thing, just make him eat some bacon. These guys were pumped about America's values of tolerance, so I knew they'd pass Trump's test with flying colors. Fill in the blank for me. Two men getting married is blank. Disgusting. Actually, the answer is legal in the United States. Oh, it's legal, but I don't like it. It's important uh, to believe in, you know, to have respect for everyone's religion. So you respect Christianity? I do. Judaism? Yes. Islam? No. Can a woman be president? The presidency is a man's job. I have women are qualified to be president. No. A female has more hormones. She could start a war in 10 seconds. If she has hot flashes, whatever, boom. Haven't all wars been started by men? Mm. Yes. Do you think a gay couple should have the same rights as a... No, I don't. I really don't. I don't think it's fair. To the gay couple? Well, no, but... The regular couple, they work so hard, you know, and the gay couple, they want more. Do you, when you say more, do you mean equal? Yeah, they want equal in that. And that's just too much? Yeah. No, that's the wrong answer, sorry, hold on. <laughs> Turns out Trump's ideology test was going to be harder than I thought. Whenever I hear president, I think of man. It's a man's job. What, what, what sort of, I may be... Uh, Close-minded. No, yeah, well, no. Um, Misogynistic? <laughs> no. You're voting against your own interests. That's it. Thank you very much. These extreme nations, they don't, they don't treat women with respect. We treat women with respect here. Yes, we do. That's an American ideal. Yeah. Tell me about your shirt. Well, what's it say? It says, <laughs> Hillary sucks. <laughs> but not like Monica. Hilarious. So we were talking about treating women with respect. It's an American ideal that we treat women with respect. You gotta give me the back of that shirt one more time, that's too much fun. Trump that bitch! <laughs> we don't even see the irony in it. I love it, right? As passionate as these guys were, they just weren't passing Trump's ideological test. Luckily, there was still time to study. This will just help you prep for the test. So if you take it again, you'll be more welcome here. Uh, this is a DVD of the third season of Will and Grace. Okay. It's a really likable and not two gay, gay people. This one is gonna be good for you. Gloria Steinem. This really like uh, humanizes women. <laughs> As us feminists, we have so much work to be done, you know. <laughs> you a feminist? No. Obviously extreme vetting was necessary to weed out extremists, but until this plan was in place, were any of us safe? 
Are you afraid the extremists are already here right now? They could be anywhere. They could be right here. They could be. Yeah, they could be over there. They could be that guy or this guy. They could be anybody. They could be anybody. This past summer, Trump flag waivers spouted a lot of theories about Hillary Clinton's health. We see the coughing fits. She's had, it seems like, a number of blood clots. What on earth could be the reason behind Hillary Clinton's bizarre behavior? Look, it almost seems seizure-esque to me. Turns out they were sort of right. We're now learning she's been diagnosed with pneumonia. If the crackpots halfway nailed one theory, maybe their truth fingers were in deeper than mine. I had to find out. I headed to Trump rallies in the crucial swing states of Ohio and Wisconsin to discover what his supporters know that the rest of us don't. Do you think it's worse than pneumonia? Eh, way she looks, yes. So what do you think's going on? It could be Parkinson's, it could be MS. It could be AIDS. What makes you think she has AIDS? The uh, way her uh, husband used to be. So you think Bill had AIDS? Yes. So how did Bill Clinton get AIDS? Probably messing around with uh, Magic Johnson. That's the natural conclusion? Yes. Interesting, the Clintons and Magic Johnson. What else do they know? They were saying there was like a double of her. Yeah, do you think there was a Hillary Clinton double? Yeah. I think anything's possible when it comes to doubles. Wow, a Clinton double, who knew? So I printed out two identical photos to see if they could see what we couldn't. And which one's the body double? I'll say that one. Oh, what is it about this one that makes you think it's not Hillary Clinton? that the little thing on her cheek is very obvious and, Listen. and the scarring or whatever this is down in her throat is different. They look a ton alike, right? Here, this right? looks a little bit younger. You think this looks younger? Yeah. But don't you think if you just look at it, something for long enough and you kind of have a paranoid mind, eventually you'll find a difference and make yeah, a big I deal of it? I think something like that's possible, yeah. Which one are you more attracted to? This one. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Uncovering Hillary's doubles is one thing, but what could they tell us about our current commander in chief? Barack Obama is a Muslim. He's a terrorist. Nobody will ever tell me different. We don't even know if he's a citizen. Yeah, if you if you don't look at the birth certificate, there's almost no evidence there. Exactly. So there's nothing Barack Obama could do to prove that he was born here. Uh, if there was maybe witnesses that were attendants at his birth, say like no. his mother. Would you listen to no. his mother? No. no, no, no. She has motivation to lie. So you don't trust. Uh, Donald Trump's birth certificate either? Uh, yeah, because he's been here forever. Well, how do you know? But how do you, what's your proof? Um, well, his parents and... But no, but they, they're biased. I'm talking about like people who could Why be in the room. Why would they be biased? Well, like, I'm just using your logic okay. against you. Okay. He acts like a Muslim. He talks like a Muslim. Uh, he also does the Muslim principles as far as jewelry is concerned. Jewelry? Yeah, jewelry. Certain months of the year, not wearing his wedding ring. That's, some, that's, that's a deep cut. You want me to connect your necklace to your Christianity? Why would you do that? Well, you just taught me it. I didn't even know people were connecting jewelry to religion. Uh, Muslims don't wear... Is that a Jew watch? And one of the most unbelievable discoveries yet. Barack Obama had a big part of 9-11. Which part? Not being around, always on vacation, never in the office. Why do you think Barack Obama wasn't in the Oval Office on 9-11? That I don't know. We'd like to get to the bottom of that. Wow, mind blown. They also had new truths about the media cover-up of Trump's surging popularity. I don't think the media really portrays all the African Americans that support Donald Trump as much right. as they do. So what should we be portraying? Where are these African Americans? Um, when you literally look out across the 400, 500 people here, we don't see any. They'll wave. Wave, white people! Yeah. It's like a Dave Matthews concert. Except Dave Matthews actually has African Americans in his band. Tell me when you see somebody who is not white. Here, right here. Thank you, brother. Donald Trump don't even know how much a loaf of bread or a dozen of eggs costs. So you don't, you don't even support Donald Trump? No. Okay, so he didn't work. Turns out they got one wrong. But the rest of their theories can be backed up with ironclad sources. And what's your source? Um, just Facebook or Twitter. I mean, I, everything. And I. So you'll look at like facts and bull. And you'll put it all exactly. together. Exactly. So outside of having no proof, what proof do you have? I don't have any. You don't have any My proof. Opinion. Your opinion. Do I have proof? No. Do I have articles? No. But your mind is made up without any information. My mind is made up. Good enough for me. 
According to the mainstream media, Donald Trump's lewd talk and recent sexual assault allegations are eroding his Republican support. The GOP is abandoning their nominee in droves. The exodus of Republican support continued. Republicans are deserting the sinking ship. But I don't listen to that noise. I listen to this throb. Papa, papa. This is Jordan Klepper, Fingers the Pulse. I hitched a ride to a rally in the crucial swing state of Pennsylvania to ask Trump supporters if he had finally crossed the line. You know what? So what if he wants to grab pussy? I want to grab pussy. That's a no. I wish I could grab as much pussy as he has. Well, I'd like to grab al Qaeda by the pussy and shove some Yankee Doodle Dandy right up its ass. Also a no. But how were they okay with a presidential candidate bragging about sexual assault? Wait for it. I think it's just locker room talk. That really, what does that mean? Guys in the bar talk that way when they see a pretty girl. What are you going to say? I've heard worse about men talking about girls, women, so... Are, they, are you talking about other like presidential candidates like Mondale? Or yes. Like it's locker room talk. That's what boys do. He didn't do it. Well, I don't, I don't talk like that. Well... Do you have any children? I do. Do they talk like that? No, they don't. So not those boys? Well, no, not those boys. Do you have a husband? Boys. I do. Does he talk like that? No. Well, not that boy. No. Is that how you talk? Well, no, but I feel like he, he says... Is that like, how your dad talks? Well, no, but... Is that like your pastor talks? No, not necessarily. So who talks like that? Uh, well, obviously Donald Trump. It was stupid bragging men talk. Yeah. Men brag. We brag, right? You brag a bit, right? Um, not exactly, but I know quite a few people that do. And background dab. Yes, it was all becoming clear. Men brag. It's just locker room talk. Grab it while you can, Trump. What, what is it? The pussy! Yeah! <laughs> Grab it all while you can! I thought Except a... I can't talk like that in front of my daughter. Oh. You, you just did! <laughs> These things you say people uh. can hear! And the locker room was huge, extending all the way across the country. Was there any line Trump couldn't cross? <laughs> is there anything Trump could say that could come on up that would make you not vote for him? No. No matter what he says or does, I will vote for Donald Trump. Well, if he said the N-word, would you still vote for him? Um, it wouldn't be right. But I would still vote for him. What if he said uh, everybody should go uh, f little pigs? Would that would you still vote for him then? I would still vote for him. Yeah. Wow. The media's fingers were nowhere near the pulse. They had gotten it wrong. People here knew Trump's comments weren't sexual assault. They were something completely different. Just ask this man who conducted a highly scientific survey. I got news for you. I asked a lot of women here, and half of them would love to have their pussy snatched by, by Trump. I got news for you. Mm -hmm. That is news to me. One man's sexual assault is another man's uh, flirtation. You must be quite the charmer with the ladies. I, I used to be. You know, I got the ring now. One of them landed me. She even squeezed it so I can't get it off because she sort of like took it off once and there was a little mark there. So she's no dummy. Oh, uh, well, I think she's a dummy if she thinks somebody else is going to f*** you. Sorry, bro. Just a little bit of locker room talk. <laughs> this has been a divisive nightmare of an election. But in the spirit of moving forward, at one of the debates, the candidates themselves took an opportunity to say one positive thing about each other. I hitched a ride to a Trump rally to see if his supporters were also ready to rise above the anger and reach out to the other side. Can you say one nice thing about Hillary Clinton? Not really. Not, no. Not one. No. No, I have absolutely nothing nice to say about Hillary Clinton. What about people who support Hillary? I think they're idiots. No, I can't, I'm sorry. I'd like to be a gentleman and say, yeah, she got a nice kid. But, but uh, she has a nice kid, right? I guess. She hasn't proven herself to be guilty of anything yet. I'm sorry. Jordan, what can I tell you? You're bumming me the f out, man. Wow, that was depressing. So I headed to a Hillary rally. Surely her supporters would live up to their slogan of stronger, together, and teach those hateful Trump voters a thing or two about kindness. What do you like about Donald Trump? Nothing. He's an asshole. Is there any good thing about Donald Trump that you could say? No. No? No. I'll give you time. OK, let me think. Um, no. You didn't really think. Oh, yes, I did. All right, no, you didn't. You changed your hair a little bit, and then you said the same thing. He has economic background. Okay. Whether he can put it into a plan that will suit our nation, stop. I don't know. Yeah, no, stop. The first part was a nice compliment. You weren't loved enough oh, as a child. Boy, that is oh, baby. 
Be nice, be nice. <laughs> so both camps have a ways to go. Maybe they just needed a little push. What if I gave you $2? Would you say something nice about Hillary Clinton? No. What if I gave you $10? No. What if I told you it will help our society to put aside your partisanship and actually say something kind about somebody that half the country supports? Not Hillary. No, no, no. Okay. How about this? Democrats like expressing their feelings. Maybe that was the way in. We're gonna do a I feel statement. Talk to Donald Trump. Okay. So I want you to say, when you blank, I feel blank. When you say grab her by the pussy, I feel like a disrespected woman. Okay, that's good. When you say let's build a wall, I say let's build you into the wall. Okay, see what you did right there? You didn't say I feel. What you did is you used that as an opportunity to be negative. Mm -hmm. Now that's something, you know who would do something like that? Donald Trump. Don't do this. This wasn't working. If I couldn't unite the people, maybe I could unite their slogans. Wait, no, that's not it. Good, okay, better. That can work. Make, oh, America, make, America, make America stronger, stronger, together, stronger together, together again. Together. Yeah, clunky, yeah. but it, it's, it it's a couple <laughs> of works. Make America stronger together again. A little bit of both. Trump. Way to move forward, okay. Just trying to move us forward. Make America stronger together again. A little bit of both. You know what? I mean, it's fully... It for Hillary, I don't want big no, it's, for, it's for us coming together. We'll be together. Don't worry about that. In hell. But then, just when I gave up hope, I finally heard it. That one positive thing. Okay, well, there's gotta be something good about Donald Trump. Let's come over. Pretend your husband is Hillary Clinton. Say something nice. I like your hair. I mean, his hair is hilarious. His hair is real. Nice hair. So if there's one thing we can all rally around as a country, it's great hair. God bless America. Not even a month since the campaign ended with victory, Donald Trump was getting the band back together again for something. The president-elect planning to visit those states that helped him secure a win for the White House. A Trump victory tour. A victory tour. Now they tell us they want us to call it a thank you tour. Uh, they're calling it a victory tour. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen that before. They're calling it a thank you tour. Right. No one in the media or Trump's camp seems to know exactly what this event is. So I went to Cincinnati to find out. What is this? Oh, uh, we know what, we got a bunch of people who are really excited about Trump. They said we're gonna get tired of winning. We're not tired. He wants to let the people know that things are still going on. The stuff that he was still campaigning about, he's still going on. I mean, it's, it's, it is. It's, it's almost as if he doesn't know when the campaign ends. That's right. What is it again? It's victory tour. It's a victory tour. Take another lap, right? Yeah, take another lap, why not? Yeah. How many of these rallies do you think you'll see in the first 100 days? I'm gonna go with 15. It's like the never-ending tour. <laughs> never-ending tour. <laughs> it's like, we don't have to do any work. We can just party all, all the all time. Day, all day long. All day, all day long. 24-7. <laughs> Somebody's gonna have to run the, the country. Yeah, well. Just think, tr the Trumpster is our president from apprentice to president. I love, tr I love Trump. It's incredible, right? <laughs> Makes you want to blow your brains out. It's, it's so mind-boggling. <laughs> Nick Jesus was right. This was a hell of a bash. While Trump has changed his tune on things like locking up Hillary and draining the swamp, these people were partying like it was October 2016. They had their signs and their background dabs, and they knew the lyrics to all the hits. We're Bill ready. We're ready. Yeah, build the wall. Build a wall, drain the swamp. Uh, lock her up. We're gonna lock her up, of course, of course. Uh, now some people are saying she's a good person, shouldn't be prosecuted. Well, they're liars. Uh, well, that person is Donald Trump. Drain that swamp. At least we know Donald Trump's not gonna stand for having Hillary's elitist New York bankers exactly. anywhere near the government. None of the bull. Except for bringing in some oh, billionaire yeah. bankers. In it's, the gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, so some of that yeah, bull. I'm sure. The so Goldman Sachs guy, I mean, that is the swamp we want to drain. Sure. But also make Secretary of the Treasury. Oh, yeah. The swamp will be drained. Now, he does have a couple of people like Steve Mnuchin, who was Goldman Sachs. You got to fill the swamp. You got to, yeah, we, there's parts of the swamp they're going to come in. There's par parts of the swamp they're going to, you know. That's just not as catchy to say. So, yeah. It's not, yeah. Don't you want the most qualified person, even though it might be a so-called, you know, lobbyist. swamp member, lobbyist or whatnot, is that have, not the best thing to do? Somebody who's the most qualified for the job, has the most experience, even if some of their background is suspect, that's the person who should have that job. That's right. A common sense way of looking at things. That was, I think, Hillary Clinton's entire platform. <laughs>
The point is, instead of spending time learning how to run the country or following through on campaign promises, having a rally like this just feels so good. The bottom line is, we won. We won. We won big. I love you too. Look at this place. Oh, you're going to be happy. We're all going to be happy. And I was finally starting to see exactly what this was. It was a big self-congratulatory pleasure fest in the round. This is kind of our triumph. And so you guys wanted to like kind of get together in a big circular area and just kind of help each other release some of the tension and celebrate. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's important for you guys to just all come together at the same time. It's a sense of community. Yeah, it's a circle jerk. If you all call it that, sure. Yeah, it's a circle jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, good talking to you. Good talking I, to you too. Just... Get ready, America. Your forearms are going to be huge. Four years ago, I hit the streets to get the unfiltered truth from America's most engaged voters. Trump that bitch! <laughs> we don't even see the irony in it. Now we're heading into an historic election, and I'm excited to get out into America and embed myself in the middle of the campaign trail. First stop, rain-soaked Hershey, Pennsylvania. But even Mother Nature couldn't dampen our spirits. It's eight hours before Donald Trump arrives. It's raining, and there are people here. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you again. You guys excited? Absolutely. Be here for Congress 2020, baby. You're running for Congress? Yes, I am. I bet you are. Good luck. <laughs> Anybody can do it. A lot of familiar faces. Doris, Carol. Nice to be out there amongst my people once more. How's it going, guys? <laughs> here we go again. Since my last Trump rally, there have been roughly 37 Marvel movies and one very combative impeachment trial. But what else has changed? So what's new this season? Um, everything, honestly. We got this uh, Baby Yoda shirt. Great America Keep. Oh, I get it. It sounds like something Donald Trump would say. Or Yoda, I suppose they have very similar syntax. We're not all great speakers. Do you have any Trump that bitch? You don't have Trump that bitch? No. Anything that's at all aimed at women? Not for women, at women. What are you hoping for tonight? I'm hoping Donald Trump is just in a good, in a, we're in a good place of mind right now. I hope he talks about immigration. So you're hoping for a building wall? I'm hoping for a wall. Uh -huh. Who's gonna pay for it? Who's gonna pay for it? I say, that's what we're gonna find out about. It's either gonna be taxpayer money oh, or- Oh, so maybe that's the chance. Who's gonna pay for it? That's what we're gonna find out about. Yep. Then why are you here? Well, because two weeks ago I had a dream, and in that dream I was given this vision. This, you, you, had, you had a screen printing dream? Your dream told you that Trump is going to win, and then Ivanka, and then Don Jr., and Eric, Tiffany is going to win in 2048, and then Barron. Great. All right. All right but Barron only serves one term. No, no, two terms. No, that's only one term. That's four years. Yeah, actually, these are mostly one term presidents. No, you're, you're not reading it right, brother. No, I'm like 20, no this is 20, 24 to 28. That's then, four years. And then another four. No, no, no. That's These are one-term presidents. Uh, Ivanka, one term. Don Jr., one what does term. What for Ivanka? What's, her, what's the date? Ivanka is 2024, and 2028. That's eight years. That's four years. No, you have a four-year period here where somebody else gets elected. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about re-elected. It does. It has her getting elected in 2024 and 2028. Your math is wrong. No, my math is not and, wrong. Of course, these rallies aren't just about spirited debate. It's also an opportunity for Trump supporters to clarify their messaging. One word descriptor, Joe Biden. Dickless. Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, scummy. Bernie Sanders. Bolshevik. Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> That's just a joke. Well, what's the punchline? Whew, man, trying to be politically correct here, but you know. So when I said Buttigieg, I thought the word you were going to pick was vet. Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg. Pete Butt. Pete Butt? Yeah, Pete Butt. That's I two words and... I can't say the whole thing on camera. What's the whole thing? Pete Butt Club. Pete Butt Club. Oh, it's homophobic. That's why you can't say it. Homophobia aside, there was one big new thing hanging over this rally. The impeachment. What, what do you think about this impeachment? Is this bullshit. Budget? Bullshit. Why is it bullshit? Why? Because he didn't do anything. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's total bullshit. It's total nonsense. And Trump has been grooming his supporters to push back on any impeachment talk with this simple demand. All you have to do is read the transcript. Read the transcript. Read the transcript. 
It's all about the transcript. Read the transcript, right. Have yeah, you read, read the transcript? It. I have not read it. But we should read the transcript. We should. Look yeah. at the transcript, right? Yeah, look at the transcript. Have you read the transcript? Uh, I, I trust the word of our president, yeah. Read the transcript, right? Yeah, Yeah. Ab absolutely. Did you exactly. read the transcript? I, I, I mean, I, I've read most of it, but I, there's, there's nothing Skim to the transcript. Yeah, I don't have time for, you know, reading all the, you know, impeachment, all that bullshit, you know, but, uh... How long have you been waiting out here for Donald Trump? Since 8 o'clock. Hours. A lot of free time. Absolutely. Hey, read the transcript. Read the transcript. Yeah. Did you read the transcript? I don't have to. <laughs> Everyone else has. I can read it if I need to, but... Right, yeah. But it's important it's, that it's everybody reads the transcript. It is very important. Pay attention and think for yourself. Yes. You have, but to be clear, you have not read the transcript. I haven't, no. Right. But it is just important. Yeah. yeah. Don't be a sheep. Think for yourself. But again, just to be very clear, yeah. you have not read it. I have not read it. You just trusted somebody else. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. What were you saying about don't be a sheep? Don't be sheep. Think, think for, for yourself. Do your own research. Do your own research. Yeah. Right. Don't be a sheep. It was a message these people, who were being herded through gates and corralled into pens to then be guarded over by men on horses, knew all too well. These totally not sheep are ready for 11 more months of this whatever this is, and so am I. Campaign 2020, here we go again. Last week I went to tropical Iowa, again. And while all eyes there have been on the Democratic candidates, a certain recently impeached former reality TV star showed up in town to get his own cup of Iowa nice. Trump train, choo choo, Trump train, choo choo. It's just awesome. <laughs> Love? Yeah! Mega! <laughs> oh shit! I've had nightmares of that shirt. <laughs> Been to a Trump rally before? No, sir. What are your expectations? Truth. Truth? At a Trump rally? Yeah. Good luck. However, all anyone's been talking about is the impeachment. And while 69% of Americans wanted to hear from witnesses like John Bolton, Senate Republicans wouldn't allow it. So what did these folks think of the trial as it nears its end? I think the impeachment trial itself is a joke, period. It's a shit show. We think it's a complete sham. He what? hasn't done anything wrong. How did we get here with no evidence? He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything They're right? well said. Well, that's it, right? He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. So we should let everybody testify. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. No. 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 Do you think John Bolton should testify? No. Why not? Well, he could testify, but I think he's uh, vengeful for getting fired from his job. I think he's a liar. John Bolton's a liar. Absolutely. There should be a system set up where he takes an oath and then under oath he tells the truth, otherwise he's punished. I think there should be, yes. And maybe there's a judge who's put in charge, like the highest judge in the land. Right. Appointed by a Republican. And then we could all see what he has to say. Would you be for a system like that? Sure. While they seem to want first-hand information from witnesses, they definitely didn't want witnesses with first-hand information. Regardless, they're sticking to Trump's favorite old defense. I've read the transcript for, verba not verbatim, but I've read the transcript, meaning like I've watched everybody read it on the news. I haven't seen the transcript. You know that's not what reading the transcript means. But you've watched people read the transcript. Right, I haven't personally read the transcript. Have you read the transcript? No. <laughs> it is, I, I have. Spoiler alert, he asked a foreign country to interfere in our election. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's you know what? I've explored this one before. But luckily, Trump has two or five new airtight legal defenses. There's no, whatever that word is, quid pro quo. <laughs> My lips are cold. It, it's, it's hard to say. Right. It's even, even harder to convince other people that new it word, happened. New word I just learned, yeah. There's no crime that's been, um, there's no a crime that he's been accused of. They've what does that mean? What? What do you, what do you mean? They have not made an accusation or um, brought an actual uh, penal code. Um, yeah. You can tell he hasn't done anything wrong just by uh, his demeanor. I mean, he would be trying to hide things. If you were blocking witnesses or evidence or something like that, you'd be like, oh, you're hiding something. But right. otherwise. Right. He's returns. saying, let him, let him see everything. Let him see everything. I'll prove whatever you want want me to prove. Right, but Trump is blocking witnesses. I don't care. Oh, but we were saying earlier that if you're blocking something, it shows that you have something to hide. Didn't Obama hide his birth certificate? 
He did. And Trump found that thing. And it said he was an American citizen. Yeah. I know. So, so, so who's got egg on their face? Yeah. <laughs> you know, who has egg on their face? Well. So what do these supporters see in our impeached president's future? They're going to uh, impeach him again. Is there going to be another I, impeachment? I, I, I probably all the way to uh, for five more years. Did you feel the impeachment was a distraction? Not at all. I don't think he's got a uh, skin that is is about as thick as it gets. Donald Trump is yeah is thick skin. He thick skin. He gets mad if a celebrity makes fun of him on Twitter. Well, the uh, um, it's good. I I like his tweetings. He should take a victory lap. It should have already happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what should he do? Alan Dershowitz got OJ off. OJ wrote a book. Dershowitz gets Trump off. Trump yeah. reads a book. Uh, I mean, he can do whatever he wants. Let's say it happens tomorrow. Trump right. beats impeachment. Trump can get on to running the country. Exactly. Like he like he has been doing for the past three and a half years now. I mean, and now with, uh, with like no impediments, no checks, no balances. Exactly. They need to have like more restrictions on who can just come up with articles for, for impeachment when nothing's been done. Who's in Donald Trump's way going forward? The only people that would be in his way are other Republicans trying to get in office. Yeah, he's finally, he's evolved this presidency it's, into a dictatorship that we could all understand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Do these folks care at all about our president declaring himself absolute ruler? I think I might know the answer. I don't care. Exactly. In the era of COVID, social gatherings come with a certain amount of risk. But Trump supporters have found safer footing on water. So I chartered a boat and went to New Jersey, baby. The site of a Trump rally on boats. While the president himself isn't there, he shouted out to his beautiful boaters, and it's the perfect way for me to get back out into the field. To get my sea legs under me, I had to talk to a real deal MAGA yachtsman like Captain John of Tom's River. Safe social distancing practices meant staging an interview that was not awkward at all. We're going to the uh, Donald Trump uh, parade today and uh, rally. As we expect over a thousand boats. I gotta say, I'm getting a little bit of boat envy here. Well, boat envy, penis envy, you, you know. No, I was making that connection too, yeah. Enough land talk. I wanted to see just how impressive these beautiful boaters were. It is a line of Trump boats as far as the eye can see. It really just keeps going. It's like an election polling place in a minority district. Who are you voting for? <laughs> who, who are you, I can't, who are you voting for? Donald Trump! Must be undecided. I'm usually not so worried out on the water, but technically this is an entire armada of Jersey drivers. Hey, thank you. You too. A little history about the area. We're here in the Jersey Shore. That's the cove where Snooky got fingered. And over there is the beach that Chris Christie hogged to himself. We will make America great again! Make America great again! Is a weird slogan for an incumbent. I'm worried about COVID! Voters absolutely love him. And the president loves boating. But why? Well, because a lot of beautiful women come with the deal, number one, and he's always been loves women, you know. Uh, that was obvious when I first met him. And, uh, you know, as another man, I could tell. You could tell. He was there like... was ways of looking at a woman and, you know, what another dis disrobing him with your eyes. Oh, yeah, that's the kind of guy you want in charge. I was on his motor yacht down in uh, Atlantic City. And he had a threw a party on it, and I was, um, I was a guest on board. You were a guest on board. The, it was great. Uh, uh, Don Johnson was there, Robin Leach. I mean, it was really a who's who, you know. Now, what Trump wife was allowed to be on the boat, what Trump mistress and future wife was on the well, boat? Well, I met both of his wives in, in past years and everything, the first one and the second one. But I remember the first time I met him, his, his uh, aura came in the room before he did. So if you had to rank Trump's energy from a scale of zero to 130,000, what would you rank it at? The top of the, you know, top of the spectrum. 130,000? Yeah, close to it, yeah. 140,000? These yeah. numbers keep going up. Yeah, I know, but uh, he's, he's that powerful. I mean, he's getting bombarded from all sides, and he's just standing there. He's not flinching, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Always, it's almost like he's doing nothing. <laughs> well, in many ways, you're correct. Do you support the basic tenets of the Black Lives Matter movement? Oh, okay. You understand that systemic racism is something that we all together have to collectively work together to dismantle? I don't know if they're understanding. 
I'm gonna try something more their speed. What's your favorite Bon Jovi song? I wonder what the relationship is between number of flags and midlife sexual insecurities. One to one? If you can't beat them, join them. So I used maritime signal flags to speak the beautiful language of the Trumpetilla. As the day wound down, it was clear the event was a success. Of course, the threshold was pretty low. I don't think we saw one fire and one thing broken. Yeah, or one minority, to be fair. Well, not true. If you look closely, you'll see everybody here. You'll see everybody that brought in here. It's very diverse. I see yachts, I see skiffs, I see jet skis. Sure, the rest of the country is suffering through a historic pandemic and a major economic and racial reckoning. But out here for the bare-chested admirals, the jet ski superheroes, and the frosé pirates, there's still only one man suited to be president. He doesn't speak or, you know, like a normal, you know, politician, but he talks like a, a billionaire and a, a businessman out of New York. Yeah, I know a lot of people, I mean, because I'm a businessman, I have lots of friends that are very successful business people, and he, um, you know, he's really perfect for the job right now. Do you think you're speaking from a position of privilege? No, not so much as privilege, but uh, just my instinct, uh, again. To, to be clear, your position is on the front of a 50-foot long yacht. 70. 70. Yes. But you're a common man. I am. You might think hours in the hot sun, bouncing on choppy seas, listening to choppy arguments, might take its toll on a liberal land lover like myself. <clears throat> and you'd be right. On the day Donald Trump most likely contracted COVID at an event in the Rose Garden, he hosted another slightly different kind of super spreader event, a campaign rally. These rallies are a known vector for spreading many of Trump's favorite lies. So I traveled to the battleground state of Pennsylvania to see just how many people had caught Trump's version of reality. I'm here at a Trump rally in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We are weeks away from the election, months away from finding out who wins and probably about a year away from losing a loved one to the inevitable civil war. Let's do this. Yeah! Make America great again. Woo! 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 Rambo flag, classic. How's it going? You mind if I check out some of your stuff? Yesterday we did $5,400 in sales. What is selling now? Is there anything 200,000 deaths later that doesn't quite work as well? Not with the Trump stuff. It's almost as if uh, the yeah. Trump stuff isn't affected by that at all. Exactly. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Tell me about these shorts. Well, we got the Donald Trump shorts. You know, we got a rep president today. You gotta be careful. Donald Trump that close to your genitals. In a decade, he's gonna deny he was ever there and counter <laughs> Pretty funny. When did you get out here to see Donald Trump? Uh, about 26 hours ago, 10 o'clock yesterday morning. So you're gonna wait two days to see the president? First of all, come on, Donald Trump is our first rock star superhero president. He's the real life Tony Stark. They should call him President Iron Man. Well, Tony Stark gave a shit about science. <laughs> so much excitement in the air. So many droplets. You feel like people are gonna feel this effect for weeks to come. Why no mask? Frankly, I forgot it in my car. I forgot to grab it on the way out. Honestly, it's not even for COVID. I just think all of the Sharpie fumes are oh, yeah. not super healthy for you. Probably not, uh, when it was still wet. <laughs> what do you think about uh, the whole mask situation right now? Are you worried about COVID? Um, for me, like me personally, I'm not worried, but my dad has like underlying health conditions. Okay. So if, if he gets it, he's gonna be in trouble. Why come here and take that risk if your dad has health issues? Just to see Trump. So it's, w it's worth a little bit of risk. Yeah. Nice flags, man. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a mask. You. Back at it. Uh. I don't live on dictators like you, douchebag. The efficacy of Trump's herd mentality theory was on full display. That's America right there. That's freedom. That's freedom? That's freedom. Are you excited about the SCOTUS Of pick? course I am. What are you excited about? Uh, it's gonna fill the court with constitutional loving Americans again. Mm -hmm. That court has been too liberal for too long. Really? Of course it has. You're pro-life? Of course. 
It's important for Americans to do whatever they can to protect a human life. Yes. Why aren't you wearing a mask? I mean, again, it's a personal choice, I think. If everybody was wearing them and everybody said put a mask on, I would respect everybody's wishes and put it on. Uh -huh. We're not cheap. We're you're lines. not cheap. You're not cheap. But if everybody here was wearing masks. If everybody was wearing them. But again, we're not cheap. You're not cheap. We're not. So you're going to look at what everybody's doing and you're going to follow That's along. That's it. Yeah. But not cheap. Not cheap. As the not sheep were bravely running into a tightly packed airplane hangar to see patient zero, I couldn't help but think of D-Day and the beaches of Normandy. Well, I don't know which side they're on. As I traced the spread of bullshit, I was fearful for those most vulnerable whose defenses were already compromised. Uh, about two months before COVID started, I somebody put me on to QAnon. Great. And I believe some of it, and I don't believe some of it, but I believe only so much can be a conspiracy. I think a lot of it's true. You know about QAnon. Is there anything you can tell us that I don't know? JFK Jr. is still alive. What? This guy is always behind Trump at the rallies. So you're saying JFK Jr is still alive and spending his time in the background at Trump rally. From, Q from QAnon, yes. Do you think racism exists in America? I do not believe that people hate each other as much as... You don't think racism is a problem in America? I do not think it's a problem now. But there's a potential that JFK Jr. is alive and here at a Trump rally. Maybe. <laughs> Hilarious. But with just over a month until the voters go to the polls, had the president somehow already contaminated election day? If Biden is elected... Uh-huh. You trust the results? No. No. They're cheaters. No. But if Trump wins, do you trust the results? Yes, absolutely. I think mail-in ballots is not going to be fair because it leads to fraud and stuff. You don't. You don't trust mail-in ballots. Not at all. The president uses mail-in ballots. Yeah, they, for, they're going to use mail-in ballots for this upcoming election, right? Right. But the president himself uses mail-in ballots. Oh, he does. Where? He, that's how he votes. He mails it in. That's, yeah, that's different. I don't, How's it different? I don't, I don't know. I honestly didn't know that. I don't even know what you're talking about. But you do know it's different. After hours in the heavily contaminated parking lot, I wanted to self-quarantine and chill. But I still had one burning question. Are you in a better place than you were four years ago? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is I'm, America in a better place than they were four years I ago? I believe absolutely. We have no, higher no. unemployment, we have 200,000 people dead due to COVID, and we have riots in the streets. Yes, let me just tell you this much. Yes, I'm doing much better. I'm literally making four times as much as I was making when Obama was president. What do you do? I work for a debt relief company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now, as a debt relief employee, you make more money under Donald Trump. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's good to be a white debt relief collector. After an historic 227-year campaign, I found myself at another Trump rally, one of three he was having in Pennsylvania that very day. While there was still some of the usual totally realistic expectations, I'm calling 47 states for Trump. At this rally in the final week of election season, I noticed something different. It was quiet. Are people just tired? You know, I think people I think people are, are exhausted. <laughs> Me too. And I'm ready to move on. I've been to a lot of Trump rallies before, and I, I have to say this is probably the most subdued rally I've been to. It's eerily quiet. You can hear a QAnon push notification ding in someone's pocket. This was a chance to hear Trump make his final case, and frankly, for MAGA country to do the same. It's about the economy. He provided jobs. And when people are working and not out looting and burning cities. Historically, this presidency has lost more jobs than any other. And that's not true. It's they not true. Oh, he has not. He has not. I'd be like, Tony, I need my sheet. I'm going to give you facts. Come on. Give me facts. The facts. That fact sheet. What's on the fact sheet? I'm going to show you. The Very fact sheet well is that in my car. Okay. We have not had a fact sheet before. This is good. Oh, really? Br okay. Bring it, bring it. I'm bringing it. I hope it doesn't have a list of all the dead because that thing's going to be huge. Okay, jobs added 4 million under Biden and Obama, negative 2 million. What, what is the website you're on? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I'll have to Google it. Okay, so her friend didn't have the facts, but she did have the Zinfandel. Let's talk about African-American communities and all the things he's done for that. Great. What has he done? With the, uh, with the jail thing. You know, where he was corrected the... Uh, you gotta help me out here. Uh, Tony, come here. While I waited for Tony to get her shit together, 
I wanted to wrap my head around their Hail Mary October surprise. And that's Hunter Biden and his, well, I'll just let them explain it. You can see on, you know, Fox and, and One American News about the, uh, the laptop, the Hunter Biden's laptop, and then uh, all the corruption taking money from the different countries, you know, from Russia and China. Then Joe Biden would do whatever these countries needed. Well, what did he do? Oh, he, what, either what he did or did not do. What didn't, what did he do? Well, it's yet to be determined exactly what he did. I saw pedophilia in China, something like that. Do you believe it? I don't know. That's something I have to look into a lot more. We see about like the, the Hunter Biden scandal. What exactly happened with that? I think they, they found a laptop that had, you know, emails Who did? in. Um, Who was the FBI? They found a laptop right. with like emails and pictures of, you know, Biden talking with like Ukraine and China about business deals and stuff like that. And Which was, Biden? Uh, Hunter Biden. Then did something happen? They want to push it to get it, you know, get the investigation underway before the election. Yeah. But what's the investigation on? About laptop. just the laptop and just seeing what was on it. What was on the laptop? Call. I mean, consp the conspiracy theorists would say that it's Joe Biden and Hunter Biden communicating with, you know, outside countries on business deals and stuff like that. Are you calling him a conspiracy theorist? <laughs> That's just what he said. <laughs> right. The conspiracy, some people. Only because it hasn't been proven yeah. yet. Make a ton of money and do absolutely nothing except say, hey, you can meet my dad. That's a disgusting trait, right? To just use your father's name to make money off of that? Absolutely. Nepotism needs to be looked into big time. Yes. What do you think about Ivanka? Oh, she's so gracious. I see Ivanka as someone who is following or creating and enhancing people's lives around jobs and training and whatever causes she has, just like Lady Diana had 20 years ago. She had certain causes, AIDS and different things like was that, it, that she was involved was in. Was Lady Diana seeking yes. copyrights in China while she had a position of power? I don't know what you're talking about. As the horn rang and the masses filed into the last rally, there was a bittersweet feeling in the air. Folks are heading on in. This is the last chance for them to get unfettered access to the President of the United States. After, after this, it might be through plexiglass, maybe with a telephone. If this somber attitude was a reflection of what could happen on Election Day, are these folks prepared for a world post-Trump? Trump could totally win. If for some chance he doesn't win, what happens to all of this afterwards? Me, personally? Sure. I will not live under a socialist government. And just look up the three red flags. On the Biden campaign poster, there's the three red lines. Yeah. Look it up on Google. Well, I think it's an E. It's supposed to be an E, but look at the three red flags or three red banners. And they mean? Communism. He stuck communism right there on the flag? You got it. Really? You don't want to be in a place of socialized medicine? Nope. So where would you go? I want to look at Costa Rica. Costa Rica, which has universal health care. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm not going to live under socialist rule. I don't think Biden's going to make the four years and the camelback, forget it. The camelback, who's that? Kamala. Oh, wow. That both mispronounced the name and uh, xenophobic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's a twofer. If they don't take you in Costa Rica, I'm sure Argentina would welcome you and your point of view with open arms. So the pitches have been made and the escape routes planned. Nothing left to do other than vote your asses off and hope we get the results soon. Until then, I'll be hiding out right here. Good luck, America. Trump's people were gathering, so I went to Washington, D.C. to the self-proclaimed and self-counted Million MAGA March, where Moms for Trump, MAGA Dads, and Free Jazz Instrumentalists for Trump <laughs> Converge to do what exactly? We are here to celebrate the winning of Donald Trump. Oh, you're four years too late. Huh? You're four years too late. No. What? No, no, no. He's he won this time. This time. He won. It's not the size of the flag that matters. It's how many votes you get in the electoral college system. They were here to celebrate the fact that America is a rich, diverse nation with so many different kinds of alleged election fraud. There's people, there's people that's, that's changing votes. Who? People across, Who? across the United States. Where did you hear this? It, all over. We can't ignore it. We're talking about having dead people vote, number one. Should Trump have appealed more to the dead person vote? Should he appeal? We just need fairness. To me, the biggest fraud 
is unfortunately the millions of voters that voted for Biden that were uh, brainwashed by the media. Everybody said this thing. Stand on your flag. Yeah, yeah. It's a big flag. Yeah, so yeah. Please don't yeah. stand on it. It's also not an American flag. So. Stars and stripes on it, brother. Just appreciate if you don't stand Doesn't on it. Doesn't it feel like it's mostly Donald Trump obscuring it? Still, flag. appreciate if you don't stand on it. be honest, if anybody's disrespecting a flag, I think it's the 10 foot high Donald Trump. I have an analogy. In the NFL, there's a close play. What do they do? They re review it, right? And sometimes it takes them 15 minutes. There's delays the game. They got to look at every little technicality. Let me do one. I got an analogy. It's like the NFL. There's a game, okay? It's the Lions versus the Packers. The Lions lose. Everybody goes home. But the Lions stay on the field, and they say, we didn't lose. And everybody's like, well, if you look at the scoreboard, it's like, uh-uh. He didn't lose. Who didn't lose? Trump. But he had less votes. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you got to take California out of the equation, and he wins the national. If you definitely discount certain people, then the numbers add up in your favor. Okay. For what? You want a flag? To stop the steal, bro. That's Stole it, stole it blatantly. What, what, what's, what's the evidence? The, 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 the mail-in ballots, first of all, we all know the whole corona was to send the mail-in ballots out to steal the election, along with the, the, uh, the voting machines are all compromised. So wait, 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 the corona was created to create- Dem The Democrats are working with the communist Chinese to put Biden in because, uh, jo because China has blackmail on Joe Biden. That is a fact. You have that on any t-shirt? No. People are stealing our election, it's obvious. This is our country, people are stealing our election. How are they stealing the election? Because it's, they're putting voter fraud, it's suspicious. How are they putting voter fraud? Department of Homeland Security said it was the most secure election in America. Who's that? That's one guy like you and me, Brosif. That's Donald. That's one guy like you and me. That's Donald Trump's Department of Homeland that's Security. Excellent. And so, because one person says something, that's a that definitely means what it is. That's the government, and the, and the court. Tr Trump's lawyer said there's no fraud. Don't try and twist me, baby. I've been in politics for a long time. Don't try and twist me, baby. You're in politics. I am the regional Tea Party chairman in Fredericksburg, baby. You're the Tea Party. I'm the Tea Party, baby. I'm the regional Tea Party chairman in the Fredericksburg region. Come on, fake news. What you got? Go find yourself a safe space. We are patriots. Let me get this straight. You're yelling at me to find a safe space and you have elevated yourself with a megaphone and you have a shield. They were having trouble facing the reality at hand, though there were occasional signs of progress. Something fitting about a U-Haul truck here. Yet no one seems to acknowledge that Trump's legal defense is crumbling. It doesn't matter though. For these guys, some battles never end. What is that? Is that, is that Trump? That's Trump on a Confederate flag? That's a Confederate flag, yeah. See that CNN? See that? Dixie still lives. Cold water. Buddy, you don't know how to pick a winner. You might as well put a Jets hat on. If they don't trust this election's narrative, which the rest of the world is seeing, what do they trust? I trust Trump and what he says and what he knows. You know, I don't trust the media that much. So the only person you really believe is Donald Trump himself? Uh, that's not the only person I believe. Who else do you believe? I mean, ultimately, I believe Jesus is king and I believe the Bible. That's like two. So you got Jesus and Trump. No, I trust a lot of people, my friends, my family. What do you say to critics? Tucker say Carlson. I yeah. Tucker Carlson, I Jesus, and Donald Trump. And more. I can go on and on if you want. No, I, I think I get the picture. We used to like Fox. We don't like Fox. We don't like, we don't like MSNBC. Anymore. We don't like CBS. We don't like any of the fake news channels because they lie oh, all the time. What happened to Fox? Was it their COVID coverage that turned you off? No. What about Hannity? I like Hannity. Hannity. Tucker. Tucker. And Tucker. Yep. So just two hours every day of Fox News, otherwise it's a complete boycott. Yes, absolutely. Even Fox wasn't welcome at this Magapalooza, which was feeling less like the peace and love of Woodstock and more like the buzzkill at Altima. Antifa! 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 Signaling the end of an era complete with actual knife violence. Are you guys the liberal media? I have one word for you. You are controlled by the deep state. That's like four, five, six government. words, ten words. You. That's even two. That one's even two. Push your fake news. Fake news. I have one word for you, fake news. You. The sign of majority. Two words. That's two. That's two words. Can no one in the MAGA world count?